being someone who absolutely loves the horror genre but just doesn't get scared by horror movies or TV shows anymore, I turned to reading horror books instead. But then I remembered something. Books? Fuck books! I put pictures in them and I'm like, oh, fuck yeah. A good example of that is Ibitsu. Ibitsu is a horror manga that I had seen in an anime man video, links in description. So I decided to give it a read seeing as he recommended it. Two weeks later and it had arrived on my doorstep. And I was not expecting the intense experience I was going to have while reading this. Ibitsu is a psychological gore-fest horror manga first published by Haruto Ryo in 2010. It contains 420 pages. Nice. And is extremely explicit, showing nudity and extreme gore everywhere. I'm no artist, but although the art isn't necessarily bad, it's not also necessarily the best I've ever seen. The art is still fucking well done enough to disturb me. As the gore, it was pretty fucking intense, and their facial expressions showed a horrific portrayal of how the characters were, were feeling. I quite liked the storyline, as every chapter I just wanted to find out more and more about this mysterious evil protagonist. Urban legend has it that a girl in gothic Lolita garb will sometimes appear at local garbage drops in the middle of the night, asking a question to people passing by, would you have a little sister? To reply is to seal one's fate and meet with a diabolical death at the hands of none other than this twisted sister. The main story follows Kazuki Ito and his younger sister Hikari Ito. Together they must fight off this demon girl with their own lives at stake. Can they get rid of this pest that haunts them, or is it fate that will not allow them to escape? In my opinion, I thought the storyline was fucking amazing. It was enough to draw me in and interest me, but to be fair, you could show titties in a manga and I would be interested, which this manga indeed has, so that's already a plus. You can see the characters become paranoid with every continuing chapter, and although exaggerated at times, it was somewhat a realistic portrayal of feet, something we all experience at least once in our life. I know I definitely fucking have, I'm pretty sure this house is haunted. Each chapter gives you more detail about the evil demon girl, and eventually her backstory is explained, and I have to say it is very fucking graphic. When reading it, I knew it was good when I was afraid, but still wanted to find out about the mysterious entity. Ibitsu made me afraid to turn the page, and when disturbing imagery followed, I genuinely was frightened. As the two siblings go, their characters look basic to say the least. I wasn't very impressed with how they look naturally, but when something bad happened you could see the fright in their eyes. When I saw how terrified their facial expressions were, it genuinely made me feel the same way as the character. Now, my favourite part, the evil protagonist. I forgot her name, <laughs> Remine Kanbe. Yeah, don't quote me on that. She has one of the coolest fucking designs I have seen in any horror medium ever, including Western horror movies, Western TV shows, any anything horror related. Her dirty clothes, her arm being stitched up, and just how she can turn from nice to straight up fucking terrifying in a matter of seconds really does it for me. She just looks creepy to sum it up. Her facial expressions show that of a mentally insane person, which does contribute to the actual storyline and her backstory in the manga. The gore and psychological imagery is where this manga really shines through though. Every scene with gore is not overused necessarily, but in my opinion used just enough to freak you out, or freak me out at least. As the psychological aspect of Ibitsu goes, it shows a great deal of pictures but even you start to wonder whether that's what the character sees or is it just trickery decided upon the entity itself. The imagery does what a horror manga of this kind is set out to do, make you cringe and disturbed about the situations and fates of each character. Ibitsu's main storyline also co coexists with two side stories. Firstly, for Hall of Dolls. Although the story of this one resembled one of a 90s slasher, this still managed to creep me out with its disturbing imagery and the fates of the characters. To put it simply, a bunch of teenagers explore an abandoned asylum for fun, but encounter a large group of wooden dolls that would soon be the reason that their fate was sealed. This one isn't that gory, but still horrifying nonetheless. Secondly, 
the curious case of the editor. I didn't like this one all too much. Honestly, it, it was just silly is, for good, is the right word for it. To put it simply, it failed to do its purpose. Scare me. With an evil protagonist looking like your average American fast food person, I found it difficult to be terrified. The story was pretty silly and to be honest, didn't make a whole lot of sense. It was just very underwhelming compared to the main story and even Hall of Dolls and could have been replaced with a different story. This manga is very disturbing in the fact that it's very gory, creepy, and shows some aspects of psychological torture towards the characters. This isn't a manga that will give you nightmares, but it is still an interesting read that both intrigued me and disturbed me at the same time. I recommend this manga to people who want something other than Junji Ito's work, and, and can appreciate gore and psychological horror mixed between each other. Personally, I fucking loved it. One of the first horror mangas I ever read it was fucking amazing, and without it, I probably wouldn't have been into horror manga as much. This is all just my opinion, so I would love to hear what you guys think about this manga. So I will leave a link to the an in real life copy of the book, which you can buy yourself and ha just have it at your home, and a digital version, so you can just read it off the web. Thanks for watching, if you made it this far at least. I appreciate it a lot. Alright, later homies. Cheers.